Good morning, everybody. Here's an Allen Bradley control. I need to figure out how to connect the CRT to this control. The cable is back over at the factory where this come out of. This is catalog number 8420MRHE. I'll show you what's inside here. Let's out a little bit so that lid don't close down on us. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't that look complex? There's a lot in there. A lot going on there, isn't there? Let me show you that connector that I'm going to draw out. I'm going to draw the circuit out for this connector right here. This is where the, the CRT plugs into this orange connector right here. You can see right there it says CRT, cathode ray tube. Down underneath here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pins that we're concerned with. We're not concerned with the rest of that right now. We just want to focus on this one area and ignore the rest of it for now. When you're working with very large circuits like this, don't want to get bogged down in the complexity of it. Don't let your mind worry about all that other stuff. Just focus on this one part right here. That's all we're worried about right now. <laughs> okay, so let's get to drawing. Take uh, some anti static bag and put down here so I can lay my paper down on there. I don't want to zap that board. Now, the chances of me zapping that board with that paper right there are zero percent. It ain't going to happen, but with my luck, <laughs> that's zero percent. <laughs> would not count, so I ain't taking no chances. Now, this is our connector that we're gonna look at. We're gonna follow it in and see if we can figure out how to connect that CRT over there to that connector. The first thing I like to do is I like to get the power supply pins out of the way. That way, uh, they're done and gone. Let's draw our connector here. And we'll start out looking for the ground and supply pins. I'm gonna label this CRT. G up here for orange. Okay. Now, here's an EEPROM right here with an Allen Bradley label on it. I know that this pin right here, 14, is ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pin 12 is ground. Also, here's some TTL. And this is pin 10. That is ground. So let's go look for our ground pins. Not ground. There's two is ground. Let's run two up here. Is anybody else ground? There's three, four, five. Five is ground. Five, six, seven is ground. Turn that light on so y'all can see what's going on. Seven is ground. There's seven, 
eight. Nine is ground. Ten is not ground. Okay, so ten. Now, what I do now is put our ground symbol up here for those four pins that are connected to ground. We don't have to worry about those four pins anymore. We know that two, five, seven, and nine are logic ground. Let's look see what uh, VCC to ground diode drop is on this unit. There's a lot of parts on here. And they're all in parallel. VCC to ground is all in parallel. So the diode drop from VCC to ground is going to be extremely low. But let's document that. Go to diode test. Okay, I got a 0 0.102 volt diode drop. That's because this whole unit here, VCC to ground, is in parallel. I'm going to write that down. VCC to ground equals 0.102V. Now that way next time this thing comes in, we'll be looking at that VCC to ground and see if it changed. If for instance we know now it's 0.102, but what if there's something shorted in here? Uh, what if VCC, like one of these uh, electrolytic caps on the board has shorted and now VCC to ground measurement in diode test mode it's 0 .002 <laughs> we know from past experience of writing this down uh, that that is a bad diode drop. Okay let's see where we're going now. Let's start with pin 1. I see what looks like a trace coming off of pin one. Let's see if we can find where that goes. Oh, let me get back in beep mode. Going on pin one. There we are. There it is. Does it go over here? No. This is a SN74 LS540N. One goes to 18. We're going to write that down. We know two is ground. Let's go to three. Just slide down the pins. There we go. Pin three goes to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17. Okay, let's write that down. 3 goes to 17. And 4. 2, 3, 4. 4 goes to 1, 11, 12, 13, 14. 5 is ground, we know 5 is ground, 6, Ground 
Let's see what 10 does. Resistor right here. That runs into this two N three zero five three transistor right here. This can. right here, this SN74LS540N. Okay, it's labeled 47 on the board, so I'll put IC47. for a data sheet. You can find data sheets on the internet. There's uh, places like www.datasheetcatalog.com, uh, all kinds of places. Uh, datasheetarchive.com, that's another good one. Uh, all you have to do is put uh, this part number in uh, Google or DuckDuckGo or places like that and you will you will have hits on uh, places where you can go find these data sheets. I'll put the part number say like SN74 LS 540N space PDF or SN74 LS 540N space data sheet and you'll find the uh, data sheets for these parts all over the place. <laughs> the internet is amazing. It is so amazing. When I was when I was younger, if you didn't have a if you didn't have a book, you didn't have it. You didn't. Ha you, it was not available. If you did not have a book like a Texas Instrument book on TTL and CMOS, or a book uh, Motorola book on TTL and CMOS and processors and you didn't have a book. You didn't have it. You had to figure it out. <laughs> that's, a, that's probably why I got real good at figuring this stuff out. Because <laughs> it wasn't, uh, wasn't handed to you like it is today. It's really nice today. Things are so much easier in the, in the world of troubleshooting. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to go track that data sheet down for that device right there. Here's the data sheet for the 74LS540. It's also the data sheet for the 74LS541. Let's get a close-up of the diagram. Here are the inputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And here are the outputs on 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11. 
pins 1 and 19 are the enables, the output enables. And they have a bubble on the input, so that means that they're both the uh, inputs on pins 1 and 19 are active low. And it's an AND gate on the output. So, I have to pull 1 low and 19 low for the outputs to come out of tri-state. Let's go ahead and label our board according to the data sheet. 18 is an output. And that goes to pin 2 on the input side. Let's draw the Smith trigger symbol. There's 14 on the output. And that goes to 6. Let's draw the output enables here. Let's see where that goes. Label that one E. something interesting here. This is a 20 pin device. Uh, VCC is on pin 20 and ground is on pin 10. But look here. 18 is the output. 2 is the input. 18 and 2 is 20. 17 is the output. 3 is the input. 17 and 3 is 20. 16 and 4 is 20. 15 and 5 is 20, 14 and 6 is 20. <laughs> yeah, so, on this device right here, if you would remember that 2 is an input, then 18 is its output. If 3 is an input, then 17 is its output. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's go down here and see if we can do that for the others. Let's see. Where do we stop at 6? Here's 7. The input, 13 is the output. 7 and 13 is 20. That works. <laughs> 8 input, 12 output, 20. 9 input, 11 output, 20. <laughs> I always see relationships. I've always got to see relationships. I don't know why. Let's go check these output enables and see what they're doing. Here's 1 and 19. Tied together by 50 ohms. Where's that coming from? If I go ground to 1, I've got 25.5 ohms. If I go ground to 19, I got 24.7. That's these resistors right here. Yeah, I got two quarter watt resistors right here. Uh, marking red, red, black, gold. That's 22 ohms. Let's see. Let's see where am I at here? Get my close up glasses on. <laughs> okay. Let's check 19. Where's 19 go? There's 19. Goes to 22 ohms. The other side goes to ground. Here's pin one. There it is. Let me get my light turned on here so y'all can see. There we go. Okay. So we have 22 ohms to ground for the enables. They use 22 ohms. They could have just tied them right to ground. You don't need to put 22 ohms between here and there. You just take pin 1 and 19, connect them together, and run them straight to ground. It won't hurt nothing. Okay, so this device is always enabled. 
other devices. Are they tied to ground? Yes. Pin 7 is tied to ground. Pin 8 is tied to ground. Pin 9 is tied to ground, so those three right there they're not using. Let's look at this circuit over here. See what they're doing with that. This right here is an NPN transistor. Its part number is 2N3053. Now on these CAN type uh, transistors, NPN and PNP, the CAN is always the collector. I have never seen a transistor in a CAN where the collector was not the metal part, the can part. Down here you'll see a tab. That tab means that that uh, pin associated with that tab, it's a mark to indicate that that pin closest to that tab is the emitter. Uh, the base, it'll also have a, a, a collector pin but that collector pin on the other side is, is attached to the can also. So you got three pins in the can. I don't want to pull this whole board off of the housing to find out how this is worked out. So we know it's an NPN transistor and we know that the can is the collector and we know that that tab right there, the indicating tab is the emitter. And I can see a thick trace. Can you all see that? You see that thick trace? That's coming out from the area of that tab, coming out from underneath the, the, the tab area. So we can assume that this trace is collected, is connected to the emitter. And that's connected to these two transistors. This is your 75 ohm quarter watt resistor right here it's connected to that comes out to pin 10 of the orange connector so what are they doing with the can well we know that the emitter is being used at the output so the can must be a fixed voltage put my meter over here let me back up a little bit so you can see now what we're going to do the meter involved. Okay, come on meter. Can you all see the meter there? Let's put our meter into diode test mode. And after we do a little bit of checking here, I'll map it out for you. Now we know that the emitter is going to be the output because it goes to this 75 ohm resistor right here. And here's an 820 ohm resistor that it's connected to. So let's find out what the can is doing. The can has to be the source of the voltage. It has to be connected to a source voltage. So we're going to Go over here and see if it's connected to the 5 volts. Here's a 74 LS 02N. Pin 14 is 5 volts. Oh, look at that. There's a direct connection from 5 volts to the can. Okay, so we know what the collector's doing. It's tied up to 5 volts. We know what the emitter's doing. It's the output. Where's the base resistor? We have to have a base resistor. There's a resistor beside it. And there's some over here that might be involved, but let's go see if we can find the base resistor. We know this is an NPN resistor. So let's put our black lead on the collector, on the can, and let's put our red lead, which is gonna be the base, on this resistor right here. There we go. There's a good base collector diode drop right there. Let's go over here to the 75 ohm resistor, which is the emitter, which we think is the emitter, because it's coming out from that tab side. 
look at that. We got a good base emitter diode drop. So that right there, that is connected to the base. Let me move the camera out of the way. And I'll start to draw that circuit out. There's what we got on the CAN transistor circuit so far. The collector is tied up to 5 volts. The emitter is the output of the CAN transistor, 2N3053, through a 75 ohm resistor out to pin 10 on that orange connector going to the CRT. The base has two biasing resistors right here up to 5 volts in ground and two inputs with different resistances on the base right here 806 ohms and 237 ohms and here is a 7406 that is driving into the base from these two outputs right here 7406 is an inverter with open collector outputs. They're not totem pole, they're open collector. I don't know where this comes from yet. We might get there someday, but really all we needed to know was pin 10 and input or pin 10 and output. And now we know from our schematic that pin 10 is an output going into the CRT. Now I'm going to power up the unit and I'm going to look at the CRT connector starting with pin 1 and going up to pin 10 and we're going to see what waveforms we've got right here. Now video has red, green, and blue video waveforms. It has a horizontal frequency and a vertical frequency. Sometimes you'll have composite video also uh, and you'll have the, the video and uh, the horizontal and the vertical usually riding on the green. It, 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 there's all kinds of different ways to do this and, and uh, that's why I need to look at the waveforms on that connector to see what we got. So let's fire this thing up and see what we got. If anything. There's pin one. Let me get this positioned properly on the screen here. Alright, I can see something right there. There we go. Looks like 60 Hertz. Can you all see that? There's some small from high to low pulses. That looks like the 60 Hertz frequency. That's your vertical, your V sync. Pin two is ground. Pin three, what do we got on pin three? see anything on pin 3. Pin 4, there we go. That is a very high frequency. Increase the amplitude here. Maybe it'll sync up a little bit better. That right there could be can't sink on it. That could be our horizontal sink frequency. Okay. I'll have to put a frequency counter on that one. There's three. Here's four. That 
looks like video. Five was ground. Six. That looks like video. Seven was ground. Eight. There's video. So we had three video signals. That's our red, green, and blue video signals. Here's nine. Nine was ground. And here is the output of that CAN transistor. Now that also looks like video. That's composite. The sum of those two 7406 open collector inverters. Huh. Okay. There we go. It's the output of that orange CRT connector. I gotta make a cable <laughs> and go from here to the panel to the CRT. Okay, well, we'll either do that tomorrow, Sunday, or, or the next day, Monday. We'll see how it goes. Got to get out of here. Got to go watch the grandkids <laughs> while my daughter goes to work. <laughs> okay. Have a good evening, folks. <laughs>